Welcome to the fourth mini lecture in 7505 NSC Project Management. In the previous lectures, we've spoken about all the different definitions of project management, uh, the organisation and some of the technical skills that are required. In this lecture, what we're going to be talking about is leadership in the project management, project team building, conflict and negotiation. Now you're going to be saying to yourself, hey, wait a sec, I've done leadership and I've done this sort of thing. This is just a repeat. Yeah, it can't be all that different. But as I've said in previous mini lectures, the one thing about projects is they are distinctly different from normal endeavours in life in respect of a number of things. First of all, project managers are often given a team at very, very short notice. And then they have to will that team so it's working efficiently almost from day one. And very often they have to work under pressures and solve problems that would take other organisations perhaps months and years to accomplish, but they have to often do this in days or weeks. So we're going to be focusing on some of the specific aspects of leadership and the project manager, and also talking about how they have to build these teams very, very quickly, deal with conflict, because projects have a creative environment, and where we have a creative environment, we're going to have conflict, and of course, negotiation. So we're going to be talking about project leadership and the differences from management and see how the two work in well together on projects. We're going to be explaining the concept of project champions and some of the new approaches being considered in leadership on projects, especially establishing professionalism in the field of project management. We're going to be talking about how project teams are selected and built with the right skill sets and attributes to avoid failure. And of course we touched on this when we did project organisations. We're going to be describing the characteristics of effective teams and the process of forming and how to achieve cross-functional cooperation. We'll talk about virtual project teams. This is really important because, especially in airlines and aerospace, very often you have to work with teams spread across the world. For example, Boeing 787 has project uh, team members who operate out of China, Japan, Italy, Australia and other parts of the world. And we're going to be talking about conflict management and its resolution and the role of negotiation of projects. This last one is particularly important and in the last lecture we'll talk about it again. Okay, so how does a project manager actually lead? Well, first of all, project managers are almost like mini chief executive officers in the sense that they have to deal with both the hard technical details, which we'll be building throughout the course, but the soft people issues. For example, Many of the project managers that I've worked with and I know have said, hey, 80% of my problems are people problems. So leadership on projects is particularly important because you don't have a large amount of time to sort it out. You've got to keep that team really working hard and building that strong team spirit all the time. You can't afford to have anything slow you down. So the thing about project managers is they acquire resources. There's nothing more useless than a project manager who can't get the right amount of resources to do the job. They've got to motivate and build teams and they've got to do it quickly. And a strong team often is behind the successful execution of a project. You can't afford to have someone who is not really strong at getting people fired up. And they've got to have a vision and fight fires. That is, they've got to be able to see the final product or service in place and they've got to be able to deal with all the little problems that arise along the way. It doesn't matter how well you plan according to the project life cycle, there are going to be things that you haven't foreseen in your risk analysis that will come up and there will be other things that aren't considered by risk such as the day-to-day -day interactions of people. And you've got to be able to communicate. Communicate, communicate, because you're dealing with people, not just often on one side, across multiple sites, multiple disciplines, often, very often, very strong-minded people. The concept of project champions, what are they? Well, a project manager can be a very, very lonely job sometimes. And one thing that they need is influential people who can help get behind them to drive a project along. And these are the people who are project champions. They work in the wings. That, that is, they're unseen 
to the people on the project, but they're championing the project itself. Generally, these people are fanatics in the single-minded pursuit of their pet ideas. For example, a particular project that I worked on, the fellow who'd actually come up with the original project had moved to a different job, but he was always working in the background to make sure the project was getting all the right support. And that was an example of a champion in action. And it was because of that person that the project actually was successfully executed because of the strong support that that person built at the top. So these champions can be like the person I described, the creative originator who came up with it, or they can be entrepreneurs. That is, people are always looking at a new way of doing business, a new product, a new service. They act almost as godfathers and sponsors because the project is their own pet that they want to see succeed. And very often, these people are also project managers themselves. And you'll see this when you do your research for your assignments. And the one thing is that champions often operate without the sanctioned approval or outside normal guidelines. That is, as I said before, they're in the wings, they're unseen but their influence is felt all the time. And Tom Peters, the management guru, has said of Project Champions, these are the people who are tenacious, committed champions. They're often a royal pain in the neck, but he says they've got to be fostered and nurtured even when it hurts. And very often we'll find with Project Champions, these are people. For example, if we look at Joe Sutter, the man who was behind the Boeing 747 project, he was really the chief engineer on the project and the major project manager, but he fought hard against Boeing management when they tried to take resources away from him. And many people say it was Joe Sutter's single-minded pursuit of the dream of the jumbo jet that made it a reality. So, project management is a profession. We come on and we talk about that. And we say, well, basically, Project work is becoming standard in many organisations. That is, years ago, people often did things without realising that they were projects, and they wondered why things didn't work so well. And then they suddenly realised, well, the change that we're bringing about fits the definition of a project. Why don't we manage it like a project? And so that's why a lot of organisations become better today. As I said, Qantas and Emirates, in building their alliance, found 24 separate projects to make the two organisations work better together. So very often there is a critical need to upgrade the skills of current project workers. That is, projects are occurring all the time. Lessons learned come out of projects, as we'll do in a later lecture. And the one thing is passing this word on so that we learn from the experience of others. And the one thing about project managers and support personnel is they often need dedicated career paths. So very often a person might start on a project in a lower level position, such as a project administrator or coordinator, or in fact they could just be another project team member. But eventually they aspire to become a project manager. Then they can become a project director, which is at a higher level looking across um, a deeper and more complex project. Eventually they become a program manager looking after a range of different projects and then they become a portfolio manager which is looking after a range of programs. And so this is a career path that people are now embarking on now and this is something that you might want to consider yourself. But the one thing is projects can only become better by the field being recognised for what it is, a specialised field that needs dedicated professionalism to develop the right people to work in that field. So how do we go about building a project team itself? Well, first of all, what are the skills we're going to need in the project? And that's often defined by the actual project goals themselves. Once we know the skills, where are the people with those skills? And let's then talk to them and find out what's their availability. Do you want to work on the project? Don't forget, projects often require working um, long hours. And so some people might want to not want to do that. Then you've got to negotiate with their supervisor. And this can be a problem in itself because the people that you want are generally the best people and the supervisor who owns those people wants them as well. If you've got success, you can start building your team. But unfortunately, sometimes you don't get success. 
And so you've got to renegotiate with top management and say, I really need this person or these people. And if top management is able to use pressure, then you can assemble your team. And if they don't, then you've got to build your fallback positions. And we'll discuss what those fallback positions are as to how you can get around that. We now come to the concept of virtual project teams. This is particularly important in the world of airlines and especially aerospace manufacturing. And this is where we often have to use electronic media to link the members of a dispersed team together. Good examples of dispersed teams are the Airbus 380 project, spread across a number of different uh, continents and countries, the Boeing 787, and the Joint Strike Fighter project being executed by Lockheed Martin. And virtual project teams themselves occur simply because different countries have different companies that are particularly good at what they do. And when you build a project team, you want to have the best skills that are available. And that's why we end up with project virtual teams. So how can we make virtual project teams work well together? People naturally like face-to-face -face communication, so we try to use that whenever possible. But sometimes it's not possible simply because it adds to the cost of the project. So we look at different ways in which we can use technology to get around it. Yeah, and that the other thing, of course, as we found in project organisations, very often people come from a functional area and they're seconded to a project. The one thing that we don't want them doing is disappearing back to their functional organisation. So we try to maintain that face-to-face -face, uh, contact as much as possible. We have a code of conduct so that even though we might have different countries, different cultures, everyone is again singing off the same sheet of music. We make sure everyone is in the communication loop. You can't communicate enough. Most projects have constant communication. They have daily meetings. They have more detailed weekly meetings, even more detailed monthly meetings, and even more detailed quarterly meetings. So communication is a big part. And we've also got a process for, address, for addressing conflict. That is, conflict is going to arise somewhere along the line, so we've got to have contract uh, resolution procedures. What are some of the effective uh, team characteristics? Clear sense of mission. Very often you find people, there are so many people on a project team and spread in different areas that not a lot of them are clearly aware of what their little part of the project, how it actually adds to the fuller project. There's the interdependency, simply by the fact that very often if you've got a change in your uh, work activity, you need to be able to talk to the people who are going to be taking over from you so that they are fully in the picture of any changes that are coming up. Cohesiveness, that is the basis of any strong team. Trust, enthusiasm and building a results orientation. And we'll cover all the different ways in which to actually build these specifically in projects and study the way that some of the successful project managers have been particularly good at this. People such as uh, Phil Condit, who ran the Boeing 777 project for Boeing. We'll look at the stages in group development. That is, when we form up our teams, a group of different people coming together, we'll look at the dynamics of forming, storming, norming, performing, and then adjourning, or sometimes people say mourning, because a good project, if it's built strong team spirit and cohesiveness, people don't want it to finish. They enjoy working in that environment, being creative and working with a great bunch of people. And any of you who've worked in that environment or work in the future will find out that really, when it's done properly, a good project team is one of the most satisfying things that you can have in life. So we'll be up talking about all of that. And we'll be talking about different ways. We'll talk about conflict. Conflict occurs on our projects because you've got problems coming up all the time and different people have different ideas about how best to solve the problem. And that's good. We want all the different perspectives brought in, but we want to have a way of choosing the best one. So conflict, we will learn to manage it on the creative side and not on the dysfunctional side. And we'll talk about the different categories of conflict, goal-oriented, administrative, interpersonal, and we'll talk about the different views. The traditional view that says that uh, conflict is a bad thing, the behavioural view that says, well, conflict is going to occur, let's learn to manage it, and then the interactionist view which says, let's manage it to our strength. 
And that negotiation, this is used right throughout from the moment that you actually win the work and you have to agree to different conditions for the project to negotiating with the customer right throughout with any changes to the project and so on. And we'll be going into negotiation. This is a really important skill set. There are courses by themselves that talk about negotiation, but we'll be talking about it as to how to use it on a product, uh, sorry, on a project so we get greater productivity. We know that negotiation is used when entering the project, resolution of different issues, acceptance of work, changes to the scope and the terms and conditions. And we'll be taking a look at all of these situations. We'll be saying, if you're gonna go into negotiation, what's the power you've got? What are the time pressures? And we know on projects, lots of time pressures. So negotiation is really important. And the final thing is, do I really trust my opponent? Trust is a really important part of negotiation. And we find in projects that building that trust, especially between contractor and customer, is one of the key issues. So in this lecture, we've got a lot. And while there are similarities to courses and leadership, we look at the specific variations that we get on projects in terms of the leadership itself, how it differs from management, how a project manager actually leads, what sort of traits, the project champion and how they act to help projects improve. We're gonna be talking about the selection of project teams and actually how you can get the best team together whilst also facing the realities that everyone wants the best people. We're gonna be talking about the actual forming up from the day the project team gets together to the day in which it disbands. We'll talk about virtual project teams because this is a reality of the modern world that we're working in. And we'll talk about conflict, not only what it is, but the fact that it's a natural thing and we have to learn how to manage it. And negotiation is a big part, not only in managing conflict, but also in the other parts of the project itself. Thank you.